I always pick the right moments to do these videos. When you're selling a car or getting rid of it, effectively you've got three options outside of an auction. The most convenient one is the one that yields the lowest price. So for example, we buy any car type place, they will be very convenient, you just drop the car off and you get paid for it. The next option would be a part exchange, where you kind of do the same thing, but you have to buy a car from the person who's essentially buying yours. Then there's option three, selling it privately. Now this is something I've been getting a lot of messages about recently, saying I've never sold one privately, I wouldn't know where to start. It baffles me that more people don't do this. Let me give you an example. I got offered 12,000 pounds for this, the BMW i3s from We Buy Any Car, 12 grand. Park exchange, I was offered 13 and a half. Selling it privately, I know I will be able to get an absolute minimum of 15 and a half. So the difference between the most convenient and the least convenient is three and a half thousand pounds on this car. That's what, 30% more? All for the sake of selling a car privately. Let me flip it around and see if you do it this way. Imagine I'm selling this, but I'm too lazy to do anything about it. I want you to sell my car for me. So what I'm gonna do is say, can you sell my car privately? I want you to do the advert, clean it up, do the pictures, meet the people, everything. And for that, I'm gonna pay you 2,000 pounds. Would you do it? Sell a car privately for two grand? I think 99.9% .9 of people watching this would do, because you'd be a fool not to. Either that or you're on one hell of an hourly rate. So as I said, this is something that I have always done. Don't get me wrong, there are times where park exchange makes more sense. The price was close enough, so I thought, you know what, I'll take the convenience. I'm not saying don't do it any other way. I'm saying for a lot of cars at the moment especially, you're going to get way more for that. Step one, clean the car inside and out. This is baffling again to me why people will sell something and never tidy up or clean beforehand. Like selling a house, you would tidy up before anyone came to look at it. So for the purposes of that and the pictures, give it a clean. Whether you pay someone to do it, which considering you're getting hopefully 15 and a half grand for it, it's worth every penny, or you do it yourself, whichever's the most convenient, but get it clean, then we can do the pictures easily enough. Next is the service and MOT. My general rule of thumb, and there's lots of variables in this, so I am being very generic. If a car has got less than say nine months MOT, I would re-MOT it, so it has a full MOT. It just gives people a bit of <laughs> peace of mind and makes it easier to sell. I would also, if it's due its service in the next two or three months, get it serviced early. So then no one can complain that there's an impending bill coming up. When it comes to tires, well, obviously they're gonna be legal because I assume they are for you to drive around in, but if some of them are really close, I mean, if there's a couple of thousand miles left on it, I would replace those tires because ultimately that's the first thing that people will spot and go, that's something I'm gonna to have to spend in the next two or three months, so I want a bit off. So we now have a clean car. We have one that's ready with its MOT and its service and et cetera, et cetera. So now we just need the pictures. What I would do is take a picture of the front, the corner, the side, the back corner, the back, that corner, the side, the car, basically go around the car and then take a picture of each wheel so people can see the condition of all of those. Even if they're curbed, be honest. Don't try and hide anything because they'll spot it as soon as they come up anyway. If it's got a lot of history, lay out the receipts and the books all nicely on your table. Take a picture of that as well because that always looks nice that you've got a, a full documented history. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to go inside. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> The key to this video is to sell it reasonably quickly and easily. I'm not trying to get top dollar for it because that takes time and a lot of people I've spoken to, it's that that they don't like, the haggling, the, the, the hassle which is involved with selling a car privately. So you will be able to get more than this if you're patient and you've got time, but ultimately that's not what this video is about. The thing that makes it easy and relatively straightforward to get rid of, it's the price. So what we're gonna do is price it properly. All you need is a phone or a PC. I'm gonna use AutoTrader rather than eBay, Gumtree and Facebook and other things for reasons I'll explain later on in the video. The best way of getting across what I mean by the price is everything, which is kind of obvious really, but think of it like this. Imagine you're selling a car for 10,000 pounds. 
and you're willing to take or be haggled down to nine and a half. I'm saying just go to the end game, advertise it at nine and a half rather than advertise it at 10 and expect to be haggled down. And then when someone rings up and more people in theory should ring up because it's advertised cheaper, you just do this. Out of the car, yes. I'm selling it for blah, blah, blah reasons. And yes, this is the spec. Because people always ask that and double, double check it on the phone. I do as well, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, yeah, you can come over, that's fine. Saturday's okay for me. But just to be clear, the price it's advertised at is the price I'm asking for. So I'm not gonna be coming down from that one. So if you're still happy at that price, then yeah, by all means, come over. At that stage, they'll either say, well, let me have a think about it and you'll never hear from them again. And I would say they're probably not that serious. They're just after that unicorn bargain price. Or they'll just go, mm, okay then, yeah, we, yeah, we'll still come round. And at that point, the price is not set in stone because they will still absolutely put an offer in even though you said you won't take it when they get here. So case in point, the last car I sold was the Mini. We'd spoke on the phone, we'd done all that essentially. They'd looked at the car, we'd done the test drive and effectively it was at the point of, yes, we would like the car. And then it went rather than, let's say £10,000, rather than, well, there's the £10,000 we agreed, what it's advertised at, or oh, would you take nine seven because... Oh, she's borrowing money from her mum and dad to get it and oh, she ain't got a lot of money but she really wants the car. I said, well, if that's the case, as her friend, you lend her the money. <laughs> I'll give her the money. You're asking me to give her the money, you give her the money. Effectively, I said, look, no, that's what it's advertised that. I said, that's what I wanted. Um, you need that key point, the ability to say no. If you don't want it at that price, thanks for coming, thanks for looking at the car. And that's effectively, again, what happened with this Mini. I went, look, if you don't want to pay, let's say, £10,000, I appreciate you coming over. I knew full well that they were walking away with that car because they'd driven 60-odd miles to get here. They'd already decided they want it, and assuming there was nothing wrong with it when they got here, then they're buying that car. The fact I said beforehand, that's the price, just meant it's an easy no. There is no haggling for me to do. That's not a haggling strategy. That's just me saying, let's get the car sorted out, the MOT, the service, the tyres. There's nothing wrong or nothing that they already don't know about with the car on the advert. You've said, this is what I want. It's a good price already. So if they're still going to turn up at that stage, then they know that that car is worth that amount of money. If someone's coming from around the corner, it's a little more difficult, but you get my point. The ability to say no, you need to be strong. You need to think, oh no, I'm going to lose this. What if no one rings up for the next week or two? If it's priced at a good price, then people will ring up. If they've rung up and they thought it was good, someone else will. You just need to not panic effectively. So how do you get that price in the first place? How do I arrive at the price for the BMW that I've mentioned already? And what we're going to do is download the AutoTrader app. I obviously already have this, or you can do it on your website. But effectively, it's just looking at the current market and then pricing it accordingly. Right, so let me show you this way so you can see what I can see. Right, so what I'm going to do is find my car, effectively, BMW i3, this is the i3s, and the age, so you click on year, 2020, maximum 2020, so that means that this is going to show me all the 2020 BMW i3 S's, mine's a 70 reg, so it doesn't do it by reg, it does it by year, unfortunately. Uh, I'm also going to go down and exclude any category cars, so they haven't been written off or anything like that. Uh, and in terms of mileage, mine's done 48, I think. So I'm going to put a minimum of 30 and a maximum of 60. So that's basically the sort of, well, it's my car, effectively. So there's 18 according to that, so let's have a look what's available. Go to sort by and then go lowest first. I should point out that you always get an ad. See where it says ad there? So the top one is always an advert, almost always an advert. And then when you're scrolling up and down, you will see ads as well. So look out for any ads because that's in between the searches, so to speak. So ignore that one. All right, so this is the cheapest, but it's a 69 reg. Mine's a 70, so that's, that's too old, 69. Uh, 20 reg, that's six months old. There we go. Right, so 20, 20, 70 reg. 42,000 miles, which is very close to mine, 15,300. Now I've looked at this beforehand, I should point out, in terms of before filming. So I already know that the spec of that isn't as high as mine, but what I'm gonna do is write down 
15, 3, 300, sorry, 15,300 pounds. Next one, that's 1558, similar sort of mileage, lesser spec. Okay, I'm gonna call it 15.6, so that's the cheapest two. 15.750, that's got more miles than mine. 16 grand, slightly less, very similar spec. 16,000 just over again, 16 and a half, 70 reg. Notice that says add on it. That is an also an advert, so I skip the ads. 17 grand, lesser spec, but less miles. So you can see the sort of ballpark we're looking at here, 17 grand, I'm gonna write that down as well. So effectively we're looking at between 15.3 and 17 grand. Although I should point out if I go to highest price first, again, ignore the advert, that's a 70 reg, 2020 with 38,000 miles on it. And that's at 19,000 pounds, <laughs> which is nearly 4,000 pounds more expensive than the cheaper one. It's from a BMW dealer, so you get a used warranty. There are sometimes reasons for that. It's a good spec, but you can see that, well, that that's, that's my car in terms of mileage and age and specs not far off and it's nearly 19 grand, but you get a year's warranty as well, which you can buy from BMW. It'll cost a thousand pounds for my car. Let me give you an example of what I mean by people who are just, well, the, 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 the two greedy and that's what's dragging it out essentially, whatever you want to call it, they've mispriced the car. 2020, 69 reg. So it's about, let's say nine months older than the cheapest 15,300 pound one I found. It's only done 20,000 miles. So it's done, let's say 20,000 miles less than that cheap one at 15 and a half grand. 20 grand, that's advertised for, 20,000 pounds. I'm sorry, but that is not even close to reality in what a car like this is worth. Four and a half thousand pound more expensive. It's over a third more for the same car. And look how long that's been online for. Thanks to a plugin that you can get for Chrome called Auto Trader Tracker. I can see the history on that advert. It was first advertised was that 20 grand car on the 18th of February. We're approaching the middle of April. So it's been on sale for nearly two months. And I wonder why. It started at 21 and a half grand in February. So it's 1500 pounds cheaper now than it was two months ago on the advert. It's clearly overpriced. You would speak to them and go, oh, we're thinking about selling our car privately. And they would say, oh, it took months to sell it. It's a nightmare, I won't bother. I'm sorry, it's delusional. It's not even close to reality, given what else is out there. For me, even at 20 grand, that's still three or 4,000 pounds overpriced. It's not gonna sell. But the longer you leave it, the more the car lowers in price. They don't go up in value unless it's something special. So that's probably a couple of hundred pounds less in the two months they've had it on sale just due to natural depreciation. And they've had a couple of months or more insurance. So that's another 100 quid. So they've lost a few hundred pounds just because they've overpriced it. Again, four and a half grand more expensive than the cheapest version I found. And that's nine months older. It's an older car. Right, so the, my car, um, I've got 15.3, 15.6, 16, 16 in it, all the way up to 17 grand. So I would probably look at the first half a dozen that matches your sort of spec and car uh, and look at the price range. Maybe the first 10 if it's a popular car. So based on that, I don't want it to be the cheapest unless you really need to get it sold quickly. Then I would put it, put it at 15.3. So I'm gonna put it at 15.750. I could get more for that. I reckon I could probably get, advertise it for 16 and a half and get above 16 for it. But again, I'm going for ease of selling and I just want, you know, I just want it to go. So 15,750 is what I would call a very good price. And again, when someone rings up, I'll say, that's the price, just to be clear. It's the haggling that people said that is the worst thing about selling privately. So this should, in theory, just take, take that away almost completely. Right, so where do you sell the car now? I would just personally stick with Auto Trader because it's the biggest online marketplace. It's probably the most trustworthy. It hides your phone number and email if that bothers you. So when someone rings the number on the advert, it gets put through to you. With eBay, I would probably be okay with that as well. However, when we're talking at this price bracket especially, if somebody's looking for, let's say an i3s, they're not just going to look on, on eBay. They're gonna look on Autotrade, on eBay, everywhere. Facebook, I don't trust. 
probably more if I were buying than selling because there's so many fake adverts on there. Gumtree, same reason. It's a bit Wild West. So again, on ease of use only, I would just stick with AutoTrader. The advert is fairly self-explanatory. AutoTrader does a lot of it for you. Put the price that you've you know, thought of, in this case, 15,750, I would advertise mine at. It would be 12,172, just serviced, good tires or new tires. Um, add the optional extras. So mine's got the heat pump and sunroof and a few other extras. Put that in the advert uh, and a reason for selling. So buy a new car or need a bigger car, need something with better range. That's a common reason to get rid of an i3. If it's got anything unique, which you think might be worth it, like uh, a specific optional extra. You know, if everybody wanted a heat pump, I would put heat pump first. Uh, if everybody was looking for a certain color, I would put, well, the picture tells you all that, but ultimately I would put the actual name of the color, not silver or gray, put whatever that is. Especially if you're selling an Audi with its 50 shades of gray. The price, the car and the pictures are enough for people to ring. That is all you need. You need someone to ring, as soon as you got them on the phone, they can ask the questions, you can tell them anything you like, but essentially, don't try and hide anything. If there's a few stone chips, you don't have to mention that on a six, seven year old car, because it's a six, seven year old car. You would expect stone chips on something that's done 50,000 miles. Then it's just a case of waiting for the phone to ring, so to speak. And if someone says, look, can I come up Thursday night? Don't go, well, well I'm, I know, I'm going out to my mate's house. Make time for it. Make sure you have all the paperwork and uh, V5 and whatnot. And then when they come round, there you, go, there you go. And clean your house as well, because I would invite someone into my house to sign the paperwork and so forth. But the one thing I do when I'm buying a car is look at somebody's house. Not the house per se, but the state of it. One car that I thought, hmm, this looks good. And I walked into what I could only describe as a complete and total pigsty. There was, it, it was, it wasn't untidy, it was filthy. And I'm thinking all they've done is clean that car up. They clearly don't take care of the car, they won't take care of the house, and it completely put me off. They've basically done as little as possible to maintain that car. That's the, the thought in my head when I saw a house that was unnecessarily dirty. I'm not saying that if you've got kids you have to make it immaculate, just it's, it says how you look after something. So that's it for me, nice and straightforward. We've got an honest advert with a good car that's just been serviced, MOT'd or whatever is relevant to your specific situation and it's a good price. So there's no reason, you're giving them no real reason to, to say it's not worth that much. Everything is in place. Hopefully that helped. Again, I'm not an expert in this field, I'm not a car trader, but I've sold plenty of used cars over the last 20 years and I've never had an issue. If you want to help this channel, then put a comment in, click subscribe. That means YouTube pushes it on other people. When you see the, what do you want to watch next, or your homepage, things you don't subscribe to, the more people that interact with the video, the more YouTube pushes it on people. So you don't have to play 99p as a member to help a channel, that would be nice, but clicking on stuff, watching the whole video, things like that, helps push whichever channel you do like. So if you could do that, that'd be brilliant, and if not, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again later on. That was a terrible outro. See you again later on. I should just say bye.